Hey, what's up, everyone, and thank you for tuning in to Heaven with Vita. Today we have a special guest. Um, he goes by the name of Mark Sargent. Um, I discovered Mark when I was scrolling through Netflix and trying to find a good documentary, and it piqued my interest beyond the curve. And Mark is is part of of the whole movement of the flat earth. Mark, I think you're the the one that had started it, right? Uh, I don't know. If, I don't think I actually started it, but I definitely wrote the the dummies guy, the flat earth 101 uh, book slash video series. So, you, so some of it, yes. Okay, that's awesome. And I also have my friend here, Donovan. Donovan, you want to say hi to all the people listening? Hey, how you doing, sir? <laughs> hey. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, what what this um, this topic for me is is very curious because people ask me, do you think the Earth is flat or round? And I say. I don't have enough information on either mm -hmm. to make that decision. I know what has been told to us, right? right? right. Um, but I also know a lot of things that have, have been told to us that have been a lie. Sure. So why, why you know, there could be a possibility. So for the Flat Earth 101 for dummies like right. me, because I don't know anything about it, maybe, maybe start explaining. Break it down it a little bit for you? <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, no, no, no worries at all. In fact, I'll do something a little different for you uh, because of, of something you just said. It, we believe that the things that are told to us uh, by science, we, we take them for granted because mm -hmm. science is, is more intelligent than us. They're smarter than us. And I remember a quote by George Orwell, the, the author that wrote 1984 years ago, which became very prophetic. And he wrote an article in 1946 for a British newspaper. And he was not a flat earther, but he said something really interesting. It was about the, the um, responsibility of science. And he said, if you walk up to anybody on the street right now and you ask them, how do you know uh, the world is a globe? How do you know this? The, almost the, the re first response is almost always going to be, well, we just know. It's a given. We know this. And then when you try to press them on it and say, well, yeah, but how do you know? They get start getting angry. And that's because they don't mm -hmm. know how they know. You see, this was, and again, remember, this was in 1946. NASA, NASA mm -hmm. wasn't even founded until 1958. So how did everybody in the world know it was a globe in 1946? It's not because they mm. knew, it was because they were told. And that's what we're really talking about here, which is the, the challenge I put out to your listeners, and that is how can, how can you prove, we'll treat it like a court case, how can you prove to me or anyone that it's a globe in a court of law? And can you do it without using a space agency like NASA or the European agency or JAXA or so on and so on? And you say, well, why, why not? You know, because you want to instinctively lean on all the space agencies. It's like, well, we've seen pictures of the Earth from space. There's the ISS and the Apollo landing and and uh, the everything that has to do with the, the different space stations that have been up there. And I'm going, yeah, yeah, yeah. But you get to remember the first blue marble shot that was ever taken by a space agency was in 1972. And it's not like we just woke up one day in 1972 and thought it was a globe. So how did we know before 1972 that it was a globe? And that's because, well, science told you. And people will, will often say, there's only really two arguments that the people throw out. Well, we, we know because there's ships going over the horizon. And, and we know this. I go, yeah. And, and if you would have told me that 10 years ago, I would have believed you. But now we have HD cameras with amazing zoom technology that can zoom into objects that are far, far beyond what that curvature should be, meaning behind the curve. There should be nothing behind the curve because you're, you're looking over a hill. And mm -hmm. we run into that more often than not. So the short version of this is that you, you have been told your entire life since you were six years old, old enough to think, the, you, the globe was put in your classroom and you to, were told you were this tiny spinning rock with water draped all over it that's going through the universe in five different directions in velocities and that you are insignificant, you're nothing, you are just this little random accident in the universe. And so that's how you start the programming. The what? Yeah, that's how they start it. The and what we try to tell people is is that no it's the exact opposite you're in a building a planetarium a terrarium a sound stage a hollywood building with walls and a floor and a ceiling one that was so big and was built so well that even our best and brightest didn't figure it out until almost 1960 
And when they did figure it out, they decided, well, probably a safer bet not to tell the population because we've been telling them it's a globe for the last five centuries. And they've been holding on to it ever since. And only now, as the information age has come to its, its climax with you know, high-speed internet and social media and six billion smartphones, only now have the, has the general population really had the, the, the informational tool of the gods and we've been able to figure this out. And so here we are, four years after I made a series of videos called Flat Earth Clues. And uh, it just keeps getting growing bigger and bigger and weirder. And now we've got not only meetups, but conferences and, and all sorts of experiments. And sorry, I rambled. You got to remember, this is what I do for a no, living. No, no, it's, so. it's actually good. You know, I was, um, when I saw The Truman Show, you know, that movie with Jim Carrey. Yep. Long, 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 long time ago. 1998 wasn't that long ago, but that's all right. I'm old. That's yeah. all right. <laughs> no, so am I. Um, so then I was, I was trying to think, like, hmm. And I, then I started to see life from that perspective, right? And right. I started to catch on to a lot of things. Right. And started to question a lot of things. Yeah. Um, and I think that's what people need to do. Um in today's world and i think people are just now waking up um and people are starting to question everything you yeah. know and and i think that's where it, it all begins to question every single thing that you've ever been told yeah don't don't take it, well, exactly what you just said there which is question everything and take everything as face value there's an old saying and i love quotes and you'll hear a bunch of them the longer you talk to me uh one of which my favorites is is trust trust everyone but count your change and mm -hmm. by that i mean it's like look give them the benefit of the doubt but don't don't turn your back on 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 everything and say well it's 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 absolutely true uh what i mean is look the, don't trust everybody that wears a white coat uh, you know the the scientists mm -hmm. if they want to tell you what the uh the temperature the boiling temperature of water is at sea level that's fine you can test that yourself right now but when they go out of their way and say, oh, yeah, by the way, here's what the core of the earth looks like. I say, whoa, 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 pull that back because you're saying the core of the earth is 4,000 miles down and the deepest hole ever drilled by anyone, which was the Germans and the Russians, was only eight miles, which is a fraction of 1%. And yet we've all seen the, the cross-section diagrams, the artist rendering of the entire earth and what it looks down there. And they have no idea. And so, but they, they preach it like it's, like it's gospel. They've, they've turned science into scientism and that is their own religion. And, you know, they wear the white mm -hmm. coats, which might as well be, you know, cloaks and, and they have, they have their churches, which are certain departments and universities and, uh, you know, not to pick on them too much, but they have taken it too far in my opinion. Yeah, I mean, I mean, and you know, when I think that when people get angry and when you're telling them something, because you're telling them which could possibly be true right. which means that everything else is a lie right. so then people can't face that they've been lied to all this time and that they've been living a lie there's and then they start questioning themselves yeah there's a mark twain quote which is beautiful which what, what you just said there and he said it is easier to fool somebody than it is mm -hmm. to convince them that they've been fooled because no one likes to admit they've been punked. No one. Yeah. And it's tough. People will defend it. I, I mean, I, I treat the globe, and it's something I came up with really, fairly recently. It's like, look, you, show, you put a globe in a corner of a, somebody's classroom when they're six years old. By the time they graduate from high school, forget about college, right? By the time they graduate from high school, that's 12 years of that globe sitting in the, in the classroom. And it, usually it's right next to the flag. If for them, it might as well be the American flag. And they're willing to fight for it at that point. You know, they get really defensive. I mean, I don't get death threats or anything like that, but people get, you know, they go through the five. Why do people go through the five stages of acceptance when it comes to this particular theory compared to everything else? I mean, they literally go through denial and anger and bargaining and depression and finally acceptance. It takes them a while. And some people never come around. If you have, in fact, if you have a master's degree in a physical science, be it geology or hydrology or biology or whatever it is, you're not going to come out of this until the mainstream media tells it to you. Uh, until mm -hmm. whatever news agency, Fox News, NBC, CNN, NBC, you know, all any of them, until they actually declare it, some people are just never, ever going to believe it. But again, our ranks have been growing. 
Yeah. So, like, so tell us, like, why why is the Earth flat for people listening? You know, like, I, I always use like every every information we provide in this show is. Right. It's for people to take whatever resonates with them and then to actually research it, to question it, to to see. Oh, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Against yeah. what they have been taught their whole life, in, you know, in all different areas of life. So of you want, do you want and, my, like, my five biggest points, like, to trying to, like, to angle people into, it's like, okay, here's why I think the earth is flat. That sort of thing? Yeah. Okay, perfect. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, we so, got we got like an hour, so right, we're, no, no, we're that, good. We that, can that, talk. All right. So my favorite, my five favorite points are, in fact, I'll give you the five points that were that I came up with last year for a. Uh, uh, there was a physicist out of Georgetown University, who, and I rarely get a chance to go against academics because they do not want to put themselves in our crosshairs. Because if you lose to a flat earther, well, you you might as well just. Uh, exercise yourself from the academic community. And so there was this German television team that, that said, okay, we got a guy for you. I didn't even find him. They found him. And they said, okay, what we're going to do is we're going to have you record five questions on video, and we're going to take that recording, and we're going to play it for him, and then we're going to play his responses and, go, and just hand the tapes back and forth. That way you're not stepping on each other's toes. You know, it doesn't come down to the skill of the orator. So... The five point, and they, they say, so come up with five scientific things. And I'll go, okay, here's my five scientific things. First one, top of the list would be long distance photography. And by that, I mean, if the curvature of the earth, and I'm not trying to scare anybody with math, right? Even though, look, I, I hate math too. I'm not going to quote geometry or trig or calculus or anything like that. I'm just going to give you some really basic algebra, which is if the curvature of the earth, told by mainstream science, is eight inches per mile squared, which means eight inches per mile per mile, which means, and I'll give you the simple, simple version of it. If it's three miles away, you take three times three, so three miles times three miles, which is nine times eight inches, and that's 72 inches of curvature, which seems pretty mm -hmm. logical. 10 miles would be 10 times 10, which is 100 times eight inches, which is 800 inches of curvature at 10 miles. And it gets, it gets worse and worse because remember it, 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 it's turning into a curve. It's not like stairs. It's not a slope. So it's going to get steeper and steeper to where if you go out like 50 miles, it's 50 times 50 times eight inches, which is uh, almost 1700 feet of curvature, which means there should be objects that are 1700 feet, 1700 feet high that you will not be able to see ever under any condition. And we have proven time and time, and it wasn't even my idea, time and time again, that when you look, and what's changed is HD camera technology, especially the, um, uh, is it the Nikon? Yeah, the Nikon P900, well, now it's the P1000, with this massive zoom, like 80X or 125X, depending on which model you get. And so what happens is the boats used to go over the curvature, right? They, we'd see them go off in the distance. It would look like it would go hull first, which was really just um, refraction and atmospheric lensing. And it would go off in the distance. You wouldn't be able to see it anymore. And it's gone. That's it. End of story, right? Well, now you take your camera and you crank up the zoom. That boat now pops back into frame. And you're just like, whoa, 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 why is that boat still there? Because it's it was gone. And, you know, you let it go off again and you crank up the zoom again and it keeps coming back into back back to where we can see objects at 100 miles, 150 miles, depending how large they are. In fact, I put a challenge out to science and I said, show me an object, whether it be a lighthouse or a building or something on the other side of a body of water, because we always use body of water because water remains level, that we can't mm -hmm. see. No matter what, whether it be the Chicago skyline or an island off, off of Hawaii, the great thing about our civilization is most of our population lives near the water. So it's easy to find objects on the other end, on the other side of um, between bodies of water. Right. And so that was the first one. All right. Uh, that's that's the longest one. The second one. Would... Yeah, no. And, and, and Donovan, he's a photographer. So he's like nodding his head. You're like, yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah. There's some objects, especially down in California. I think there's an island off of Los Angeles, which you should not be able to see. Not the whole thing. And uh, it's, and in fact, the only it, I'll, I'll take it even one step further because people say, well, OK, well, if that's true, then why can't we see Japan from California? And I go, well, because you're because of the atmosphere you're looking through, you got most people do not. And trust me, I'm not I'm not condemning people. Most people don't remember anything that was taught about science. And there's lots of stuff in science that we're not taught about in high school and in college, one of which is what we're breathing right now. Uh, what we're breathing right now is only 20 percent oxygen. The rest is nitrogen. 
we're, we're basically breathing in a thin version of water. And so it's only 99% transparent. And so as it gets thicker off into the distance, it's like looking underwater. You know, when you're looking at the water, you can only see a whale maybe three, 400 yards away because the water's so thick. Well, we're in a thinner version of that, but it still gets thicker over time. And so you can only see um, at sea level less than 200 miles usually because the atmosphere gets so thick at that point, it just gets obscured. Even if it's just dust in the air, it doesn't even have to have clouds or anything. Um, so the reason why you can't see Japan from California or Europe from New York or wherever is because the atmosphere is just is too thick. Now, if you pulled all the atmosphere off and you were in some something that you, you would protect you from dying because you know, you'd be in a vacuum and you wouldn't have anything to breathe, then you probably could see a long, long, long distance. But uh, that's hypothetical. Anyway. So uh, the second point would be, uh, which is one of my favorites, which is gravity versus the vacuum of space, which is I have talked to industrial vacuum experts and people that deal with clean rooms and create amazingly powerful vacuums, which means so we're breathing in, you know, oxygen and nitrogen and all this. Now, if you pull all that out of the room, we all, all know kind of what a vacuum is, but a pure vacuum. An absolute pure vacuum where there's nothing in there. I mean, no oxygen, no nitrogen, no molecules, no nothing. It is there's it is basically the the essence of uh, one of the laws of thermodynamics, which means pressure needs a container, and we are under atmosphere atmosphere pressure, right? Well, if the vacuum of space has nothing in nothing in it, then how does our atmosphere not just get torn off and ripped into the emptiness of space? And science will come back to you and say, well, it's because of gravity. And it's like nope. No, sorry, not not good enough. Gravity is is strong, but it's not nearly strong enough to combat the vacuum of space. And, and a quick example would be, if you, I, I imagine you're there's a, a floor above your building right now. You, you're like on the first floor, second yeah. floor, but there's a floor above you, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, perfect. Okay. Let's say you made that the floor above you a vacuum, right? Just a vacuum chamber. There's nothing in it, and then you punched a hole in the ceiling. What do you think is going to happen? All that atmosphere is going to go straight up into that vacuum and it's going to be horrible, right? It's, it's going to be awful, yeah. awful, terrible. Well, the question is, well, why does it do that? Because remember, you've got gravity that's sitting, you know, below you. Why doesn't gravity stop all the air from going into that upper chamber? Everybody knows what would happen. And science does have an explanation of this. Uh, we say, okay, the, the short version is where does our atmosphere end and space begin? Meaning, where does the, all the oxygen and nitrogen and helium and all the fluorocarbons, where does that end? Where is that, where does that trail off? It, it's, it can't be this gradient scale. It, it violates the law of thermodynamics. Pressure needs a container. A can of hairspray, you need a container. You blow up a balloon, even the balloon it has a contain, you know, is a container. It's a soft container, but it goes rigid. Uh, another container would like be a basketball. Why is a basketball hard? Why can't you burst a basketball with your hands? It's because it becomes rigid and it's a solid container at that point. So that's the second one. Um, third one would be the moon shadow in, during an eclipse. Uh, I don't know where you were during the big eclipse of 2017, the big American eclipse. Uh, but I was in California. Eh. But I remember everybody going to Oregon to go see it closer. Yeah, yeah, I yeah they uh, there was a, the documentary team took well you saw the documentary I I went to it mm -hmm. in uh, in Salem Salem Oregon and it was gorgeous it was absolutely wonderful, but the question was if the moon if mainstream science says the moon is two thousand miles wide, why was the blackout zone so small? Why was the, why did you have to go to Oregon to see the blackout? Remember the blackout zone is only seventy miles wide, That's true. and yet the yeah. moon is two thousand miles wide. That'd be the equivalent of you walking next to a building. And your shadow on the building is about the size of an action figure, a very small action figure. And we never see that in real life. And, and, and of course, science will say, well, no, no, the moon acts as like a convex lens and it shrinks down that, that shadow to a really, really small size. I go, okay, if you want to go with that, then tell me why doesn't the opposite happen when the earth is in front of the sun and we have a blood moon? Meaning when the earth passes in front of the sun and the earth is supposedly 8,000 miles wide, why isn't there a blackout zone on the moon that's four times as large as the blackout zone from the moon? Meaning, so if the, the moon eclipse shadow is 70 miles wide, then the earth eclipse shadow should be 250, 260 miles wide. We don't see that ever, ever, ever. Why not? No one ever wants to talk about it. 
Fourth one, super mm. simple, and anyone mm-hmm. can check this out. With that a, make you go, hmm. Exactly. So I hope everyone's listening out there and is questioning it. Oh, I'm, okay. I'm sure they have questions at this point. But it gets weirder. Okay, so the fourth one is super, super easy, and anyone can test this, and that is the moon generates a cold light. And by that, I don't mean that it's cold at night. We all know that. What I mean is the moon seems to be generating its own light source and it's completely different from the sun so the comparison would be if the sun is an incandescent light bulb that generates heat the moon is an led light bulb that generates a cold light example of this and you can again you can test this out yourself it's 20 bucks go down to the hardware store buy a uh, point and click infrared thermometer which they use for testing engines and road work and stuff like that but but they're easy, they're easy. you can find them anywhere point and click infrared thermometer and uh, so when you're in the sunlight, you know this end in California, if it's 90 degrees in the sun, it's probably 80 degrees in the shade, give or take, because you know the, the shadow of whatever you're in is blocking some of the sunlight. Well, in the moonlight, it's the exact opposite. Meaning, if it is, let's say, uh, 50 degrees in the moonlight, it's 60 degrees in the moon shade. It's actually warmer in the shade than it is in the moonlight, up to 13 degrees. I've even tested it myself. I I, I, abs- I was into flat Earth for probably a year before I heard this one, and someone said, well, "You got to you got to see this for yourself." And I was like, "Holy smokes, it's absolutely true!" And what that means is, is that the moon is generating what's known as a cold laser light, and this is something that I didn't even know existed until a few years ago, which is uh, universities can replicate this now. They're, we all know that lasers can generate things and burn things, but we can also, by adjusting the frequency, we can use a laser to actually refrigerate stuff. I mean, not like it's not like you're going to use it. They're going to use it in refrigerators to chill lettuce or vegetables or anything like that. But it can cool things down with a laser light. And so, okay, does that prove a flat Earth? No, it does not. But it absolutely destroys any relationship that science says that the moon has with the sun. Because up until now, they said, well, yeah, the the moon is reflecting the sun, some of the sun's radiation. That's why it glows. And if that was the case, we would see either a fraction of warming or at the very least neutral. It certainly wouldn't get colder. It wouldn't generate a cold light. That's the fourth one. The last one, fifth and final one, as far as things I'm going to just throw out. I, I've got other examples, but these are my top five. Uh, the fifth one would be the Van Allen radiation belts, which were announced by a NASA scientist named Van Allen back in the late 1950s. In fact, announced in 1959, and he said there's a band of, of radiation, a big donut band supposedly around the Earth that's super, super thick and really, really deadly, and nobody can ever go through it ever, ever, ever. And yet, just a few years later, when John Kennedy announced the space program and said, oh, yeah, we're going to be going to the moon, uh, and they went these round-trip uh, round trip, uh, uh, Apollo missions through the Van Allen belt. So the question, here's here's where the Van Allen, it's a trap question, which is, it's real simple. You can throw this at anybody, including scientists, and say, are the Van Allen belts deadly? Yes or no? Simple question. If they say yes, say yes, they are deadly. It's like, oh, okay, then how did all the Apollo astronauts make round trips through this thing? Nobody died. Nobody got radiation poisoning. Nobody even got cancer. There's still five of these guys walking around today. They've all died of natural causes. That's mm. that. That's if you say yes. Now, if you say no, they're not deadly. Then I say, okay, then why does the NASA website at nasa.gov, you can look this up yourself. It's still there today. Uh, there's uh, a video out there they made uh, about four years ago called Orion Trial by Fire, which is part of their Mars program. And they said, oh yeah, we're not going to be sending our test capsules with people inside it because the Van Allen radiation belts are so deadly, we haven't figured out how to solve the radiation problem yet. And mm-hmm. it's, like, whoa, 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 what do you mean you haven't solved the problem yet? You solved the problem back in the 60s. In fact, you solved it perfectly with 60s technology. It's 2019, and you can't solve the radiation problem? What what happened? Did we lose the technology? Did, did all of a sudden you forget how to, because the only, I, just so you guys know, I believe in gravity, but I also believe in radiation. Radiation, of course, is a real thing. If you think you're kidding, mm-hmm. try to go to a dentist's office and have an x-ray taken without wearing that lead vest. They're never going to let you do it. Um, there's only yeah. two things that can stop radiation in terms of um, solid materials. One, of course, is lead, and the other is gold. Uh, gold is actually twice as dense as lead, but of course, it's a lot more expensive. And then it, well, you can also stop radiation with a whole bunch of water, which is what they use in uh, power plants. 
So, but but the Apollo program, in fact, none of the space programs used either of those because lead is lead and gold are and water are very very heavy, and that's the last thing you want to do is put an anchor on top of a rocket. So, the five those five points when I threw those at the astrophysicist at Georgetown, you know, recorded it on video and sent to him. That was it. He folded like a card table, and and the debate was over. And he didn't concede or anything. He said, "Yeah, I'm not doing this." And, and that was it because oh, science yeah. has, there, there is no way to answer some of those questions. And so, yeah, I, I kind of wish I would, I could get a better opponent, but so far, no. You're undefeated. It's undefeated. <laughs> I well, I, you know, I put the challenge out there, but to be fair, most of your scientists and people in academia are so tunnel visioned in their specialty. You know, if, if you're, if you're an astrophysicist, you could literally spend your entire life studying dark matter and that's it. And you have no opinion on anything else. Uh, so, it, you know, we, and, and Flat Earth comes at people in so many different facets. I, I don't blame them. I, I wouldn't want to go up against it either because it's tricky. It's like a minefield. Anyway, go ahead. Mm -hmm. Sorry. It's your show. Why am I talking no, so No, no, this is awesome. I love it. I love it. I mean, you're giving us a lot of information. Yeah. And so I want to ask you, Mark, like, how was it that you stumbled upon this? Like, was it something that someone shared with you and then you it started, you know, getting your, like, you're curious and you kept you know, researching. Uh, well, How it, did you... it initially started with a, um, at the end of a six day meth bender combined with hallucinogens. Uh, no, I'm totally making that up. I was, um, no, I was bored, <laughs> believe it or not. Uh, I was, I was conspiracy, what I call conspiracy bored. I thought I had pretty much finished the internet when it came to, to conspiracies in 2014. And to where I look, I had an opinion on just about every conspiracy you could think of. Some I liked, some I didn't like, some I hated. And everybody knows about Flat Earth. Everybody's heard about it. In fact, I have yet, yet to find a single person, if I bring up Flat Earth to them, where they go, never heard of it. Everybody knows what it is. And everybody, again, everybody in our community hates it, hated it as well. And you start in the hole. Everybody, the t-shirt should read, I became a Flat Earther because I tried to debunk it. And mm -hmm. that was the same way with me. And so I looked and I was like, all right, I'll look at this stupid you thing. You should make those shirts, Mark. Oh, well, there's a lot of shirts out there, but nobody's got anything copyrighted. So that's fine. Um, so I uh, I tried to shoot this thing down in a weekend. And I thought, okay, I'm a fairly creative problem solver. Uh, you give me enough time and I can I can solve a lot of stuff. And uh, that, was, that was what I was trained to do. I, I used to te um, uh, teach people proprietary software for 20 years. So I, I tried to shoot this thing down and I just kept running into loose ends and the loose ends really bug you when you start looking at this. It's like, okay, what about this? What about this? What about this? And they just never, ever end to where nine months later, I'm sitting at the beginning of 2015 and I'm going, okay, I can't, I can't, I can't prove the globe anymore for whatever reason. I can't do it. It was really frustrating. I mean, I, I think I broke at least one of my keyboards. Because I'm just banging my head on it. And there's no way. There's no way. Because it, you feel like you were punked all your, your entire yeah. life. And so I made a series of videos. And I put them out in the internet. And I called them Flat Earth Clues. And I said, okay, the internet as a, as a, as a hive mind is much more intelligent than me. Somebody is going to be able to pick up where I made the mistake. And shoot this thing down. And I can be done with it. And go back to my normal life of playing video games. And, and eating popcorn and drinking wine. And, and watching movies. <laughs> and the exact opposite happens. I made the series of videos. I go, okay, here's what I think is going on. I think it actually might be flat. Tell me where I went wrong. And shut me up. And almost immediately the phone started. And I put my phone number out there, my name, my physical address, you know, it's because I want to make it easy. It's like, okay, somebody, okay. you know, somebody beat me down. You know, some some scientist, please call me up, do this. And the exact opposite happened to where people were just calling me out of the blue. Uh, subject matter experts from different branches of the military and engineers and pilots. And, and they were calling me going, you know what? You may be on to something here. I'm going, that is not what I want to hear. What I want you to tell me is where I went wrong. It's no, man, you may be, you may be onto something here. And then it's like, I, it, and then people want to interview me and people are just calling just to, to say hi and, and all this stuff. And it's like, oh, okay, well, I'll just keep the phone number and just not answer my phone anymore. And that's, and then that was, that was it. I mean, and, and so any doubt I had, because I was waiting for the other shoe to drop for at least three to six months. Uh, any doubt I had just kind of evaporated by the end of 2015, and then I just started becoming um, more or less the freshman recruiter 
for Flat Earth University. I mean, there's channels out there that are bigger than mine and, and people that have a lot more subscribers and, and do bigger things and do experiments. But mo if you're first getting into Flat Earth, there's a high degree of probability you're going to run into my stuff. And so, yeah, that's, that's how I got into it. And uh, there are days I wish I never, ever saw it. Um, and, <laughs> and if I went back in time Why? and saw, it's just, uh, go ahead. It's just frustrating sometimes. Oh, well, it can be because I, one, I didn't want to do this. Are you kidding? Mm -hmm. Nobody, I mean, it, five years ago, if you would have told me, if I would have got, go back in time, you know, time travel, talk to your earlier self and say, oh yeah, by the way, you're going to be making over a thousand flat earth videos and going to conferences and doing public speaking engagements regarding flat earth. You're, you're basically going to be, you're going to be like one of the faces of flat earth. I'd, I'd look at you like you were crazy. And it's like, but at the same time, here we are. Uh, I mean, I've got six more conferences this year I've got to do in the, the next one I've got is in New Zealand, followed by Canada, UK, Mount Shasta, California, Amsterdam, and Dallas. And that's just, wow. the, that's just the conferences. It's, it's, it's grown to a level of, which I never, ever, never would have thought. It, we've just gotten... Uh, media spoiled on top of it. I mean, I just did the um, uh, Australian Today show like two days ago. They wanted to talk about it. It's like, really? Great. Fantastic. Just ask me the questions. I, I don't even research most of the groups going in now. I just, it's like, I, I'm, I'm looking like for original questions. But anyway, sorry. Again, your show, talk. What do you want? <laughs> Wait, so Donovan has a question to ask. Yes. Hey, how you doing, Mark? Hi. Um, I have a question. Um, as far as like the earth being round, and, and I do believe... Or flat. Or flat, yeah. <laughs> right. Um, I always thought about the water and, like, the oceans and things like that if it was, you know, if the Earth was round. Right. Like, wouldn't the water... Like, where would the water go? Excellent. Like, if it's round, that is... It that is an excellent point. And by the way, just so you know, and it is a common misconception, which is uh, we don't even... The Flat Earth uh, community members, we don't even use the word round anymore. Um, because mm -hmm. technically, uh, a dinner plate is round, a dining room table is round, your hubcap is round. Round can also be two-dimensional, so we always say um, ball or sphere or globe. Globe is probably the most the most common, just so you know. But you're right, on a globe, the water has a particular problem, and that is we all know that water moves very, very easily when it comes to gravitational forces. If you have any doubt, uh, take your, your lid off your cup of coffee and make a sharp left-hand turn in your car. And, and watch what happens to the water. It will move in a hurry. Uh, right. So the question is, if the water, like for example, it's, we all know if it's on a globe, the water is uniform across, around this entire blue ball, right? Well, and they say the gravity's holding it perfectly on there. It's like, yeah, that would work if the ball wasn't moving. And by that, I mean, we, you all, we all know that mainstream science is the Earth is spinning. It's actually uh, moving at a thousand, over a thousand miles an hour at the equator, the fastest at the equator. And it's hardly moving at all at the North Pole and South Pole. So it's kind of like a merry-go-round, but kind of a big, fat merry-go-round. So we all know when you're on a merry-go-round, if you're on the outside, you're, you're, you're going to be flung off eventually. But if you're standing right in the middle of the merry-go-round, you're just going to turn around in a circle and get dizzy. So right. the, quest, the question is, if the equator is pulling all the water to it, or should be pulling all the water to it, why don't we see that? Meaning, um, like Saturn has, if you believe in Saturn, right, Saturn has its rings, which are just rocks, you know, flying around the outside of it. Well, why does the water, why don't we see that with the Earth? I mean, if, if it is spinning that at that sort of rate, we should see this big bulge of water, at the very least, around the equator. There should be no, no land at the equator at all. It should be covered with this big hump of water and the North Pole and the South Pole really shouldn't have any, any water at all. All the water should be sucked off those things and they should be uh, giant bald spots on, on both the North and the South and we don't see that. So is that right, what you were right. kind of asking? Yeah. 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 And um, I know that it says like if the Earth's supposed to spend like 24 hours, right? Right. And shouldn't it be like 12 or 13 degrees? every hour or something like that as well or well okay so it is 15 if, if you're and i know you haven't seen the documentary yet which is interesting it's supposedly 15 degrees per hour oh, okay. so if it's uh if it's a 360 degree thing it's 15 degrees per hour and uh eventually if you watch the documentary what's interesting is you know it's something that uh, I always like to show people because now in, in now on YouTube you can you can look this up all day long, which is time lapse of the sky, right? And if you watch time lapse of the stars and the planets at night, it looks like the sky is moving. 
right? Right. And that's what we have been told. You know, that's what every civilization that's ever been around up until about 500 years ago thought. It's like, okay, we're not moving, but the sky is. And then the Copernicus model came out, and then science came back. It's like, no, 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 it's the exact opposite. We're, we're The sky isn't moving, we're moving. You just can't feel it. That's like, really? Because right. it doesn't appear that way. And anyway, so yeah. Anyway, sorry, go ahead. <laughs> no, that was it. That, I was just, those questions was on my mind. Oh, okay. Anything, cool. So. Cool. So, cool, like, so I have a question. Like, So if we're in this whole simulated world, right? Right. And everything is, we're just, um, like, what is the purpose Ooh. for it? Right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. What do you think? Um, hang on, hang on one second. Sorry, somebody. I feel like maybe they're doing like an experiment, and we just don't even know we're being experimented as just a human race. Um, it really varies. It depends who you think built it. Um, got to remember that most of the um, most of the people in this world fall to one of the religious houses that's out there. There's five major religious houses of uh, Buddhism, Hinduism, Judaism, Islam, and Christianity. And, but at the same time, there are still people that's like, okay, so if we, if this is a giant snow globe, if this is a giant Truman show, who built it and why, mm -hmm. uh, you can only go one of two routes. One is an advanced civilization, uh, that's, that's techno technologically far superior and older than us. Or the other is divine. And really, at that point, you're kind of splitting hairs. And I'm not trying to diminish religion in any way, shape, or form. But come on, one man's uh, advanced civilization is another man's deity. If a giant golden spaceship all of a sudden decided to land in Los Angeles, new religions would pop up instantly. Regardless, as long as they were better looking than us. That, that's the catch. They can't be worse looking than mm -hmm. us. Uh, but as far <laughs> as why... Um, Take your pick. For me, I like to consider it a school. It can only be one of three things. And that is, it can either be um, entertainment, which is kind of dicey because most of the people that are living here aren't really having that great of a time. They don't seem entertained. Uh, the One could be confinement, like a prison. But it's like, no, it's not that cruel either. I mean, plus it's a very, very attractive prison and there's a lot of beautiful things here. Uh, it kind of feels like school, which is kind of a hybrid between the two. It feels like we're here to learn something. Now, they could be observed. Or maybe like a video game too, right? Oh, of course. Of course. Yeah, and, and if you want to get into the whole simulation part of it, yes, there are some scientific things out there which people can look at which just scream. That this is one thing that we, science and me, are on the same page on, and that is that just scream that the, there's a simulation. The, the most obvious would be the double slit experiment. Uh, if anyone wants to look it up, it's the single electron gun experiment. I think it's 2004, 2003, which basically says that nothing truly exists unless a person is looking at it. Unless a human mm. being is looking at it. And you're going, okay, why does, how does that mean it's a simulation? Okay, what that means is, is in video games, if you, if you guys ever play video games, is uh, the example I like to show people is, okay, so you see a mountain off of the distance in a video game. If you're a programmer and you know your character is never ever going to be on the other side of that mountain, do you draw the other side of the mountain? No. No, you don't because you want to save computer power. There's no point. Your character is never going to go there. The other side of the mountain doesn't exist. It might as well be just be a Hollywood facade. It's just the front of something. Well, we see that in the real world too at the molecular level. We see this now. So the, why, do, why do our simulations, why are the things that are happening in our simulations also happening in real life? And I don't want to spook people out by saying that, but it is true. And, uh, you know, I, it, it's tough to explain to people unless you've done any sort of software development. So what I try to, I start with flat, which is, okay, look, all simulations, every video game, I don't care if it's Grand Theft Auto or Warcraft or, or Minecraft or whatever it is, all the simulations you play in a game world are flat. They're absolutely flat because the characters, they're ne there's no point. The characters aren't going to know the difference between flat and curved. And if it's flat then it's also enclosed. And if it's enclosed, then it's probably a simulation. But we have to start with something simple, which is flat. And so that's where I start people off on, which is it's flat world. Yeah, I mean, I always say, like, something doesn't exist. Like, who decided that a cup was going to be a cup? We all made a conscious choice, right, that a cup is a cup, and everybody agreed to it, 
right? Right. So it's the same thing as like when you're in school, they're teaching you that they taught the, our parents that, and so forth and so on. And we we've all made a conscious choice to make that a reality. Ooh, very deep. Right. I I did not expect this from you. I I thought that you'd be asking me some surface level questions. That's good. <laughs> No, no, I'm, I'm, I'm very deep, and, and, and I, I, you know, like, simple question. I mean, simple conversations don't uh, interest me. Well. Um, so I, this is why this show is created, to, to, um, to make people think. Where, you know? where, have you, and, where have you been all my life? Seriously. I know I'm, <laughs> I'm old enough to be your dad, but come on. This is this is great no, I'm stuff. I'm so, no, that's that's awesome. Yeah, and you're and you're absolutely right. Um, it, I mean, come on. When we were even before we had movies like The Matrix and The Thirteenth Floor and Ready Player One and all that stuff, the concept was out there for a long time. And that is, are we living in a dream world, or are we living somebody else's dream, or are we living our own dreams? And so the concept of living in a simulate, you know, quote unquote simulated world was out there for, for ages and ages. It's something we, we've dealt with it for a long time. Only recently, when we were able to throw it up on a, a computer screen, were we able to make it more um, visceral, more real. You know, something we could explain to people. It's like, oh yeah, by the way, in case you don't dream or have any sort of imagination at all, here's what can be done out there. And then a lot of people got it. But again, remember, even The Matrix is 20 years old now. 20, in fact, it's 20 years old this year. And uh, mm -hmm. it, it didn't. I'm actually want to have the lady that created the Matrix on the show. Um, I don't know if you know the story. About I her. know the it, story it, of this. There's a most yes. people do not know the story that the Wach, Wach, Wachowski brothers. The just... mother of Matrix. Everybody, she's uh, on, on Instagram. She was the one. They stole all her ideas. Everything. Now she she ended up. They ended up settling with her, right? If I'm not mistaken. Yeah, she yeah. Uh, she ended up getting the uh, copyright. Board. Good, paid, good for I, I her. her the yeah, no, the Wachowski yeah. brothers are not bright uh, in, in the slightest. They just got lucky. It was a good, it was a good plot. Look, the storyline is what made that movie, and they lucked out because the special effects were just coming into their own. Plus, you know, you mix in the the bullet time for the first the effects for the first time ever, and you know, it was a big hit. But no, those guys are not bright at all. What? In fact, tell me something else they made outside of the Matrix. Nothing. Speed Racer, Cricket. Speed Racer. They didn't write that. Speed Racer was from the freaking sixties. Anyway, sorry. Go ahead. No, it, it's it's so true. And you know, I always think like, um, if if everyone agreed to to one thing, like not what you're told, like research everything and just what resonates with you, right? And and go from that, you will discover so much more. And and partially. Um, because I'm really into like you know health and stuff. You know they give you food that makes you not think. They give you drugs that make you not think. And they're, you're just kind of just like living, and then you're being kind of told what to think. And no one is. Well, there's people now that are starting to wake up and starting to realize it. And you know the word is getting out. But this is this is what I try to you know tell all the audience um, that are listening to really like watch what you eat because it's like your your in your gut is like where your instincts come from sure right sure body body chem and, uh, body chemistry is a tricky thing and body chemistry absolutely affects your uh, your attitude and your spirituality and how you interact with people definitely yeah and if that keeps you, if that is kept down right so then you're you're not even you're if you're like constantly in pain and trauma and suffering and all these things, right. your mind is not going to think like, you know, absor absorb something in the, in the world and be like, hmm, that doesn't seem right. And then keep searching like you did, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it's far in between the people that do that. And hopefully, you know, this gets out there and people just start just start asking questions it opens it up for a lot of things what i try to tell people is that look i i know i've known conspiracy people my whole life people that fully believe that the members of the royal family in england are all made out of lizards and mm -hmm. we in, in disguise and yet when i bring up flat earth to them they just shut down it's like whatever get out of here it's like really because i thought your theory was a little bit fringe 
Uh, if, <laughs> if you can open up your mind to this concept that maybe the world you're living in isn't exactly what you've been told, then you can revisit anything. Uh, you can, you can, you become so, I, for me, in my opinion, you fully become woke for lack of a better term, yeah. like, like Kyrie Irving says, uh, you all of a sudden can, can gauge things and you, you, f there's a sense of freedom to it, which is okay. I see you know, the world X in some ways comes, be becomes a little bit more complicated because you have to start looking at intentions. For me, it was a little bit easier because I looked at people. It's like, okay, why is this conspiracy the way it is and who benefits from them? And would I do the same thing they did in, if I was in their shoes? And once you can sort of resolve that in your head, then okay, yeah, things start making more sense. The real history. Um, I'll end this part with that, which is uh, we all know that history is written by the winners, but Napoleon actually said it better. He goes, you know what? History is just lies that are agreed upon. Yeah. So that's that's the whole thing, that the concept that I said. If, if, if everyone agrees on something, then that's what it will be. Yeah. That's why I can't take That's why I can't take nasa's word for anything anymore. hey i'm by the way i'm not knocking i mean nasa look i'm i'm a big pro-american guy rah rah wave the flag go team you know america's the greatest that sort of thing but you gotta remember that nasa is military since minute one i mean yeah exactly. they wear white uniforms they don't carry guns and they smile for the camera but they are uniquely military. Uh, they are Department of Defense. Their their entire systems are based off of missile technology. In fact, they they all their initial their founding fathers were the still burning embers of the uh, the Nazi war machine from World War II. You know, if you if right. which is funny because if you're if you're really really intelligent, you don't get executed. You get hired. It's weird, yeah, they, you know, hired, so you're not, you're not a war all, criminal yeah. anymore. It's like, no, 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 we can use him. And so yeah, they we, hired all the NASA, um, uh, scientists. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We took, we took half of them and the Soviet union took the other half and, and look at that. Both sides created, created these great rocket programs and yeah. yeah. Exactly. <laughs> anyway. It's really crazy. Yeah. <laughs> it's really crazy. And it's something that, um, it, for me, it's intriguing. Like, for me, my story is, you know, I wanted to be at a certain spot in my life and, and I achieved that. And, and then I started to ask questions like life is empty. Like what, what is, what is there left? Right. Um, right. and I started to ask more questions like, why is this, this, and why is that? And why is this? And then it took me on a whole long spiritual journey and I started to discover so many things and then, um, it opened me up and when someone says something um it, it look it's even it even goes back down to like when people gossip right right when people right. gossip they're they're speaking ill about someone else that they don't even know they're just hearing it from someone else you know it's kind of like the whole thing with telephone when back in the days when we were in school yep. that by the time you know they tell the first person the last person is a different story because everyone interprets everything differently yep. depending on yep. their mind their state of mind so when everyone is is thinking, okay, this is this is what it is, and this is what it is, and this is what it is, it just creates this whole um, chaos, right? And people are constantly arguing with each other, and and it just never. It seems like it, it gets people just to be in a conflict, yep, and never yep. to be really like. Let me, let me just hear this person. Right. Um, and so, like, with the whole thing back to gossip was like, okay, you're now repeating something that was told to you that you don't know a hundred percent. Now, are you willing to die for that, for that gossip? Right. Right. If you think about it, like, you're you're then just creating more of that. Um, I'm trying to get my words. Uh, you're just creating more of that illness. I I will call it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 We we're deep down we against the Truman Show line, which is we believe the world that is presented to us, and we also believe just ev just about everything else is presented to us. We give people the benefit of the doubt, unless you're severely jaded. I mean, I granted I grew up in a very sheltered rural environment up at, on an island up in the Northwest, and I didn't even believe that people in authority would lie about anything. 
didn't even think mm-hmm. it was like why would they it's like why don't people you know people for the most part are what we see on on the early television and movies they they're honest and it's all about integrity and and honor and that's simply not the case uh women get a pass most of the time because it's men are e- more easily corrupted than anybody else uh but it is a politically complicated world out there but only because we make it complicated and it shouldn't be that way we the human human beings the human race our civilization should be better we should we have so much potential and we just seem to squander it at just about every opportunity and uh I'm just doing what I can to, you know, I'm, I'm hoping that this particular aspect of it, uh, because if, if the flat earth is real, if we are in this building and we're all part of the same system, then we're all part of the same family. And I don't think and we, we should try to get out. Yeah. Well that, and we wouldn't, we <laughs> wouldn't, be, we wouldn't be fighting each other. Uh, would we yeah, still, would we still I have, the, would we still have the same aspect of war? Would we still commit, commit hate crimes or sex crimes? Or any of this else or i mean i i personally i'm just saying this from my personal standpoint once i really got into this i made a resolution that i will never do a malicious thing to anybody else in my life uh now of course mm-hmm. i'll defend myself if, if somebody came at me with a crowbar or something absolutely but i but will you know ne- who you are yeah and that's that's enough and i think that's what people need to find out who they really are you know yeah. not like what you've been told yeah. you are yep Totally agree. And then you won't have a problem with anybody. And this is part of the, the show is called Heaven with Vita because someone asked me, what was my mission? My mission is to bring heaven on earth for people. I want everyone, I want to bring peace. You know, my name means life. My last name means war. Yeah. I'm like, I don't want to see war anymore. I don't know. I wish I could like just shake people up. No, that's wonderful. <laughs> I'm 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 kind of stuck in a way because my first name is from the God of War and my last name is a military rank, so oh I'm I I may be doomed. <laughs> you you have more hope than I do, uh, but but no, that's wonderful. That's beautiful what you just said. I think it's very noble, and uh, I wish there were a lot more people like you out there. Uh, thank you. Yeah. No, it's 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 um it's just something. I mean, when I reached. A level that I wanted to be at and I was just like this is really empty and it's like what am I doing so um, you know the universe after I learned all these things and I wasn't sharing it you know I got really sick and I almost died and it's like okay now it's time for you to speak like don't be scared to speak and one of my biggest fears was speaking and you know like doing the show is overcoming that and I just keep pushing and um just putting my intentions out there and hoping that people wake up and i just want to live in a world where everyone gets along i know it's it seems impossible but i think everything is possible and i just think that people have been fed the wrong information and people need to to you know be shown a different way and and i hope that this show and you know people like you um give an opportunity for people to just open up and just to think Wonderful. like we're not telling you this is the way to go yeah but just think yeah yeah think. Ab- absolutely that that thought is going to take you down a path that you will discover yourself you are probably the most and i have done a lot of interviews at this point you're probably the most open-minded host i've i've ever met ah thank you seriously <laughs> <laughs> I seriously you I like you, you go above and beyond because most people are like just barely hanging on to this whole thing and you're you're going down the road of self-discovery that's absolutely awesome uh, yeah I think I think that if everyone does that the world would be a different place that you're constantly telling see I was born in Cuba yeah and when you go to Cuba everyone's like very confident and in Cuba there's no billboards telling you that you're not enough here, there's everything is telling you that you're not enough. You need this. You need that. And I want to, you know, I mean, it's just me, but I want to um, help people. And and everything is 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 teaching people on how to just be stuck in their 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 hamster wheel, and right. really doesn't give you an opportunity to then ask the questions. Right. and to, to think and that's 
just my my whole goal and my mission, but I could keep on talking about that. That is great stuff. <laughs> Seriously, that is wonderful. I, I. But thank you, thank you so much, Mark, for for your time yeah. and and like if people that you know they want to hear more about this um, and want to follow you, maybe give your information. Um, it's not your telephone number or address, but like your your your. Facebook, social. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Is- it's super. It's super easy. Actually, I'm I'm very easy to find. Uh, just type, go into Google or whatever search engine you use, and type in Flat Earth Clues, and that will lead you to either the book or the documentary that came out called uh, Behind the Curve, uh, which I was in, which just came out on Netflix about a month ago, and uh, the rest of it. You know, every video in the body of every description box of every video I do, and there's a lot out there is my my physical address and my phone number and everything else you would ever need to reach me so again yeah easy to find and and thank you so much for having me it was a pleasure thank you mark and are you thinking about maybe getting having a book writing a book oh it's already it's already wrote it uh it's it's literally it's a book it's a book based off of the video series called flat earth clues and i didn't even have to write it uh some london publishing company called me up and said hey i would like to turn your thing into a book it's like okay do i have to do anything no Next thing you know, it was on Amazon. So, but cool, great. Awesome. But again, so the, go check it out too. Yeah, and Amazon, again, right? there's lots of great content out there. Great people that are making stuff. And uh, I get the, my parting words here would be: don't take my word for it. You know, do your own research. Always ask questions and see where it takes you. That's that's perfect. Thank you so much, Mark. Thank I you, appreciate Mark. it. Thanks, guys. Have a good one. All right. See you. Bye. Bye.